Welcome to Worship Where You Are with Patasca United Methodist Church. This is the promised land. God's love has been present with us, with humanity from the beginning and will continue to be present with us always. God's love is reflected in each person worshiping with us this morning. You are loved here in this virtual gathering. So welcome to the promised land of God, redeeming and nurturing love. Shall we pray? Everlasting God, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Since the creation of the world, you have nurtured us with your love. And yet, we shamefully acknowledge that we do not always share your love with others. We are selective about who we choose as neighbors, but only those who are clean, who look like us, who talk right, who seem safe, loving God. Teach us to love you more fully, for in loving you, our lives will show love to all others, even as your love encompasses all your creation in all generations. We pray this in the name of your greatest gift of love, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm reading from the book Deuteronomy this morning, chapter 34. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, al Naphtali, the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the Negev, and the plain. This is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in the valley of Moab opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not been abated. The Israelites swept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. And for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays a power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Let's pray. In the midst of frightening times, when words of division soar heavenward, when disdain of others is normalized, and blame shifting is accepted as the way to approach challenges, be with us, merciful God. We do not want to live drenched in negativity. We seek your peace and healing love. Our hearts are filled with concern for our families and friends, as well as those in far off places who face great difficulties, illnesses, loss and grief as well. We name silently in our hearts those for whom we seek your strength, for whom we seek your healing and your mercy. We know that you hear our cries and that you respond in love. We cling to hope because in the midst of darkness, your light of joy continues to break through. 
hear also our whispers of gratitude as we share those moments which have caused us to rejoice and delight in your love this week. Lord, the warmth of your light thaws our frozen hearts like a ray of sun melts frost upon the ground. We are grateful for all the ways that you show us what it is like to live in the land of your promise. Be with all of us, O Lord. Heal our hurts. Mend our brokenness. Build bridges across our divides. Direct our lives in pathways of peace. And as we submit ourselves to your leadership, accept our lives as our offering to you. We offer ourselves and our resources in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. Though I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire and have not love, my words are vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain. Though I may give striving so my love profess but not be given by love within the prophet soon turns strangely Spirit, come, our hearts control, our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed by. Our gospel lesson is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, beginning at verse 34 and going through verse 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth 
and the meditations of all of our hearts, O Lord, be pleasing to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In our Old Testament lesson today, we encounter a moment of deep intimacy between God and Moses. Moses had been leading God's people for more than 40 years. From the time Moses encountered God in the burning bush in the desert of Midian, to this moment, he had confronted Pharaoh, he had guided the people through the seven plagues, he had given the people instructions to prepare for a journey out of Egypt, and then he led the people from enslavement to freedom through the Red Sea and into the desert, all with God's instruction, guidance, and aid. Then for 40 more years, God continued to advise and direct Moses as he led God's people closer and closer to the land that God had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now at this moment, finally, God stood with Moses at Mount Nebo, atop Pisgah. And he showed Moses this promised land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, Ephraim, Manasseh, Judah, the Negev, the Valley of Jericho, and the City of Palms, all the way to Zor. Now I imagine God offering Moses this sweeping view and Moses scanning this area with tears running down his cheeks. Not tears of sadness, mind you, but tears of celebration. Celebration that Moses had done all that the Lord had asked him. And now he stood looking at the future of his people knowing that he had accomplished what he had accomplished only with God's help, Moses stood on the mountaintop, realizing the culmination and end to his own journey of faith. And so Moses stood atop Pisgah, taking in a vast landscape, of hope. Fast forward to the time of Jesus. By the time the Pharisees and Sadducees were leading God's people, there were roughly 613 commandments that the Jews were required to know and follow. These 613 commandments are found within the first five books of what we call the Old Testament. And these laws or commandments were supposed to be memorized and internalized by the people. But by the time Jesus came into his ministry, the Pharisees had begun to impose these laws in addition to religious traditions that had been adopted over the years and forced on to others, while the Pharisees often did not follow the laws and traditions themselves. Now the Sadducees were the religious elite, and by contrast, they connected directly to the priesthood, and they had become scriptural literalists. So, while the Pharisees and Sadducees 
disagreed inherently, they had kind of joined forces to come at Jesus and trap this rebel rabbi whose, whose popularity threatened their power, their perceived piety, and their position. So with 613 commandments to memorize and observe, in order to be considered a Jew worth any salt, they asked Jesus, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Now imagine the Pharisees and the Sadducees standing smugly with arms crossed, side glancing one another, inwardly scoffing as they awaited Jesus' answer. We've got him now, they must have thought. But Jesus answered with the commandment portion of the prayer that every Jew knows by heart. The Shema. It begins, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And it continues with this one command. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Uh oh. The jaws go slack. The crossed arms fall. Those side glances move to guilty toe gazing. And Jesus continued. And the second is like it You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, Hang all the law and the prophets. Mic drop. Of the 613 commandments in the book of Moses, the Torah, the one commandment that these people were supposed to know by heart, the one commandment that should relatively flow like blood through their veins, they had seemingly forgotten. Shouldn't they have known? Shouldn't this have been evident in their living? When you're praying a prayer every day for years, shouldn't it become a part of who you are? Jesus told the Pharisees that all the law and the prophets, all 613 commandments, and all the words and warnings of the prophets hung on these two. Imagine a hanger, a regular hanger with 613 ribbons or strings hanging off of it. Every single one of those dangling strings would be anchored to that hanger. And Christ himself named that hanger love. Everything. All the law, all the tradition, all of the religious practice hangs onto that one singular command to love God and love others. It all hangs on love. So what criticism was Jesus ultimately giving to the Pharisees who were so concerned with their traditions? He was saying, if the tradition is not rooted in the love of God and of others, it is meaningless to God. To the Sadducees, who were so concerned with scriptural purity and interpretation of the law, he was saying, if the practices of piety 
are not rooted in the love of God and the love of others. Those practices are meaningless to God. Everything hangs on these two commandments. Everything that matters to God is right there. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthian church, reminded them similarly that these laws of love are important. Paul said in chapter 13 of his letter to the Corinthians, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. And then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three. And the greatest of these is love. These laws of love are more than just ribbons on a hanger. They are the hanger itself. It is on these two laws that all of our faith witness depends. The love of God and the love of others are the commands against which we are measured. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God's love for us is a love that saves. It's a love that transforms. It is a love that is given in such a way that as we receive that love fully and we submit to love's work in us, It changes us. It changes us into people who love with a love that we have experienced ourselves. A love that embraces, that accepts, that cherishes, and that extends beyond ourselves. So what if our everyday, as followers of Christ, what if our Every day began with a prayer similar to that of the Shema. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we hear you. You are one with the Father and with the Spirit. And we love you with all our heart, our soul, and our strength. And we love our neighbor as ourselves. God help us to live into this commandment of love today and every day. Transform us, O oh God. Amen. What if we started every day with a prayer like that? 
There's a fairly modern worship tradition called Tizé, founded by Brother Roger in 1940. It's an ecumenical monastic order with a strong devotion to peace and justice through prayer. One of the hallmarks of Tizé worship are the repetitious chant songs that highlight phrases from psalms and other scripture. So today, I'll leave you with this simple Latin prayer found in our Faith We Sing hymnal called Ubi Caritas. I've asked Matt and Susie to sing it for us, and I hope that it sticks with you as a reminder that as we live out the law of love, we are transformed. Yes, all the law and the prophets hang on the law of love. Where there is charity, there is love. Where there is charity, God dwells with you. Close your eyes and let these words seep into your bones. Amen. Receive these words. Live in charity and steadfast love. Live in charity. God will dwell with you. Brothers and sisters, we have one great value at the core of our being. And that value is love. So go. Go into your homes, into your community. Go into your world. Go and love as you love God. Love others with gratitude that you are made in God's image of love. Friends, go in the certain hope that God loves you. And God goes with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>